radio presenters literally saw them doing what they do. We used to go to the road shows, uh, the Radio 1 road shows at Bournemouth Beach, uh, which is near where I was brought up. And I just looked at the fun they were having and I thought, well, that's a great job to have. And I went to those having spent the 70s taping the top 40 off of the radio like every other kid on a Sunday night. And listening to those guys do that job, I just, I just thought, wow, what a fantastic way to earn a living. Why wouldn't you want to play pop music for a living? And why wouldn't you want to mess about on stage on a beach all summer? You know, why wouldn't you want to do that? It's probably that the technology has meant that radio stations can do more with less. So you are expected to do more, uh, i.e. you can kind of present a live show, but over the course of a week you can also voice track other shows uh, for other stations in the company, uh, other shows at the same station, so there are fewer of you and fewer opportunities. Uh, there's obviously the networking thing, whereby not all shows on local radio are presented in the town to which they broadcast. We've seen a lot of that with uh, Capital and Heart recently. They've just binned literally hundreds of morning presenters and drive time presenters. And now uh, all the shows come from London, so there are no local shows. So a big difference in opportunity. And so obviously the, the voice tracking technology and the networking technology uh, has meant there are fewer opportunities for things. Uh, other than the job being an amazing job and not really seeming like work, uh, there were freebies, uh, vinyl records back in the day, CDs, uh, not so much now because obviously that's not how music is either consumed or broadcast, uh, you know, t-shirts and concert tickets, uh, things like that. But no, not so much anymore. Certainly not, uh, uh, in my experience anyway. I think that as time went on, I think you were expected to do a lot more on your own. You might have had some help, a team, a producer, a researcher, someone to help you put your show together, but as I went along, that stopped happening. It kind of happens at the most senior levels, like the big BBC shows, even B local BBC. You know, there's a production team who'll put shows together. Uh, at Heart and Capital, their shows will have teams of people to put them together. At the national level, obviously, they have teams, but at the local level, which is what I enjoyed the most, I didn't have aspirations to sort of do anything at a national level, that just got, uh, that just got kind of, there were fewer and fewer resources, you had to do everything yourself. Uh, which is a challenge, and is interesting, but it's a lot of pressure as well to sort of generate uh, a three hour show every day, five days a week, all by yourself. Prep the night before, maybe an hour, I'd start thinking, right, what's what can we talk about tomorrow? And I kind of sketch out roughly what we could talk about. Um, and then first thing in the morning, get up about four, work for an hour until sort of five, 5.30, kind of putting flesh on the bones, so to speak. Get to the studio by about six, 6.15 for a seven o'clock start, present the show till 10. A couple of hours afterwards, emails, admin, phone calls, chat with the boss, make sure they liked the show, did they have anything they wanted me to do the next day, uh, blah, blah, blah. So get home about midday, something like that. So you six hours a day plus an hour or so the evening before. So it's getting on for an eight hour day. It's just spread out over a period of time. None whatsoever. Um, if you work for, say, the BBC, there might be a staff job as a presenter, but I think presenters on the whole are still, well, certainly were and are still largely 
employed on a freelance basis, so about the same job security as any other freelance job that you might care to mention, possibly a little bit less. Um, I have It's never happened to me, but I have heard of presenters doing a show, being called into the office and that's it, they're gone, and they didn't know they were going to be let go that day. Um, I'm not saying that's common practice, but it does happen. But it's yeah, it's about as secure as any other freelance job, really. I not very. Have a plan B. Be prepared to make plan B, plan A, and pretend it was the plan all along. Um, but like any other media job, really, and I think the media is particularly unusual in this respect. You're expected to have experience before you approach employers seriously. So if you're at school or college, you need to be doing hospital radio, community radio, internet radio, something like that. Uh, when you come to a place like Solent, there's obviously um, sonar and things like that that you can do. There are local radio stations here who will give you experience. Voice FM, for instance, you can see 101. Uh, to a lesser extent, BBC Radio Solent. You need to be targeting all those people uh, right from the minute that you start your degree here. Um, and even, even if you don't have a degree at school or college, you need to be sort of getting as much experience as possible because they're going to expect you to hit the ground running. They're not going to teach you how to present a radio show. You're expected to kind of equip yourself with that kind of skill and have a show reel to play them. Um, that needs to be done before you start seriously looking